guys this, going at it, boy. This is a big guy battle. Wow. Well, an advantage for the Ranger. Remke had no helmet for the Johnston, so those punches are going to hurt a little more when they land. Seven, how big's Johnston? Six, five, five. No, I think he's a six, seven also. Yeah. Yeah, he, they're dope. That's pretty good size. The Rempire State. The Rempire State. Welcome <laughs> to the Instigators Hockey Show. That guy right there, that's Chris Katsopoulos. He's got his shirt on. I had an offer on the other show today, too, to let, let them know what we do here. So What we do is we fuck with everyone. We talk hockey, and uh, we got the best show in the world, honestly. If you want to know the truth, nope. I just want to no, say. No holds, um, no holds barred. Go for that, it. That's it. We talk what nobody else wants to talk about it, um, and we have fun doing it. Uh, we got so much to talk about. I don't know if we're going to get to everything. Uh, Beth loaded me up with content, good stuff. Um, Beth, Beth, is, Beth is amazing with the content she comes up with. I know. She's awesome. Um, obviously, we're going to talk New York Rangers, but we're going to do that in a little while. We, we got to hold you. We got to hold everybody down here and, 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 and talk about what's going on around the league. Uh, Cots, I mean, uh, again, like I said, I don't know if I'm going to get to everything, but uh, – uh, I guess I'll start with the boring stuff. Uh, <laughs> the stuff you hate. Hello, so, Looks like uh, it looks like video review. Um, there's gonna, they're gonna add some other topics that can go to video review. <laughs> One of them is there's gonna be a challenge for clearing the puck over the boards. Your favorite, your favorite penalty of all time. So uh, they're going to be able to review that as well. The dumbest, uh, the dumbest rule in all sports. <laughs> it, really, it really is. It's the stupidest fucking rule in any sport today. I don't disagree with you. What, what are they going to change about it? I, I didn't read that because it makes me sick, that rule. The GMs are going to discuss uh, – well, they're going to open the parameters of what they, what's, what's reviewable and – uh, apparently, uh, dumping the puck over the boards is going to be one of those uh, reviewable plays now. I guess right now it's not reviewable. So, uh, I guess well, it's going to be. Words, they're really just not doing anything about the rule, except now we're going to microscope it. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Well, that's you know. bullshit. You know, yeah. it is what it is. Right, the GMs whatever. are going to meet uh, on that, and then uh, they're going to talk about long term uh, injury reserve. Uh, injury oh, reserve. Yeah. With all the fake that Tampa does and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, it's Dodging the old uh, salary cap. Yeah. 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 That, so that, that is something they should look into. And they're going to. Apparently, uh, the GMs are supposed to get back to uh, Daly and Batman, and uh, there's going to be some some uh, in depth discussion on uh, how uh, how they're going to handle that moving forward. So that's the second part of that. Um, and then, oh, you know, as always, I have to uh, – I got to bash your guy. How's Jordan Tortorella doing these days, pal? <laughs> he fucking kills me. This well, you didn't, you didn't have, listen, if you didn't have torts in your life, you'd have nothing to talk about. I'm telling you. you 39 seconds about. into his last interview, he walks off. Only talks. Only talks. Only torts. And uh, what did he do? He benched his captain the other day and uh, – well, and, he probably uh, should have because he's done shit since he's come back. And uh, he uh, he openly discussed the fact that he's never been treated so poorly ever. So, very interesting stuff around John Uncle Vinny Tortorella. Get, get Couturier some Kleenex, will you? Give you know, <laughs> him some Kleenex. I mean, really, give me a yeah. break. You the know guys, what? Can listen, the guy's... The guy's, the guy's at the end of his career. I get it, okay? And again, he's the captain and stuff. But he's done nothing since he's come back. He's got, like, one goal and nothing else. You know what I mean? And, and if he gets scratched, ooh, 
I'm going to come out and have a little press conference of myself and tell what I've never been treated like that in my life. Here's the difference between now and then. I couldn't do that and get away with it back in my day because I didn't have $22 million in the bank. <laughs> the has got at least 20 or $30 million in the bank, so what are they going to do to him if he talks? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. But you love it. I know. It's a torts thing. It's a torts thing. You yeah. love it. Listen, we got we got to have a, a weekly torts thing, period. <laughs> it's always good for the show, okay? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I don't hate it as much as everyone thinks. Sometimes torts – I agree with Tortorella, Tortorella, but for the most part, his antics are just too much. All I know is he's got them filthy flyers in a playoff spot, big boy. Yeah, well, I don't know no about case. how for long There's, either. The way – right now – if, if there's a voting for coaches, the best, like, number one coach in the league, Torch is going to get some votes. You watch. He's mm. going to get some votes. I think it's going to be Rick Tockett, personally. Yeah, Vancouver, sure. And I, I would probably give Lavalette a little bit of uh, love, too. But I, I guarantee you, Torch will get some votes. You watch. Who's, co- um, who's the coach of the Predators? That's a good – oh, uh, what's the guy? The guy was coach of Florida, got fired from Florida. Remember? You would know. I don't know. He, I he, was, he was a coach in Florida for a while. I got to think. Hmm. Beth, where are you when we need you? I know uh, it's Maurice now. but uh, And then uh, the other coach that I was thinking about – God, I was just thinking about it too um, – on, He's a coach. The guy, the guy was coaching Florida a little bit, and then he, uh, he got, he had a drunk driving charge or something like that. I don't know. I'm right on that part. Just can't remember his name. Yeah, he, listen, Nashville out of nowhere. I mean, where did they come from? They came from like, like they didn't even come from the ground level. They came from the sewer up. Yeah, no, no joke. They were laughing stock for a while. It was wow. horrible. Good, good for Trotz, though. I like uh, the, man like that's, the man that's running the whole organization. Andrew Burnett, that's it. That's who's coaching them. Thank and, you, uh, Anthony. Uh, I like Trotz. Trotz. Trotz has done everything the right way. He started out the right way as an assistant coach, went to become a head coach in the American Hockey League, worked his way to the NHL. He won Alex Ovechkin's only Stanley Cup for him. Uh, now he's running the show in, t- in uh, Tennessee there, in Nashville. And uh, I'll tell you what, I, I think he's a great hockey mind. Yeah. And then you got to give it up to the Oilers coach. The guy, uh, what's his name? Yeah. Malblock. They took from yeah. the Rangers because when they got him, they were in the shitter. Now they're well into playoff contention um, and uh, have really changed, you know, have really fixed their game up. So, yeah, no, he, he definitely put them from uh, out of the playoffs into the playoffs, but I still, there's still a big question mark to me, to, you know, how they're going to do in the playoffs. I, I need, to, in other words, show me. Don't, don't talk, talk about it. Show me. Yeah. That's what I've got to see how that happens. Mm-hmm. Colorado's picked up their game. They look pretty good. Uh, they got some injured players back and uh, again, back into some serious contention. So, uh, you know. There's a lot of teams, Paulie, that I think on both sides that look like the team, and then they don't look like the team. Well. You know what I mean? I, I think it's I, – I don't see – I don't see any favorites right now, to be honest with you. Yeah. I would love to tell you it's the Rangers, and I would love to say, hey – it's going to be the Rangers and the Leafs in the final in the East. That's about my wish. Yeah. But who knows? Well, I tell you, um, <clears throat> there's a lot to be said about Winnipeg, even though they dropped the last two games, which is crazy. I thought they're, they're you know, they've been, uh, they've been a real tough team this year. They got, you know, the best, uh, uh Best goalie in the game right now. They got great defense. They play a heavy game, so they're a team to watch out for. I still, I'm still, uh, I don't know, I'm still a little, 
a little weary about the Florida Panthers. Uh, you know, Rangers played them, and we'll talk about this in a little while, but Rangers played them. I mean, they're number one guys out of the game in, in Barkov. Um, so, you know, I mean, they're they're a pretty scary team, and you got to look at uh, – we talk about the Predators. I think I think the last time I looked, they were like 17-3-1 in their last 20, 21 games. So – um, kind of like, kind of like the Rangers' record, I guess. Just getting, yeah, just getting hot at the right time, obviously. Um, um, so there's, you know, there's a lot to look at here. Um, no question, no question about it. I do want to discuss about a couple of things that. Um, let's see here. A couple of things. I mean, obviously, I, I have to. Um. It's very, very, very sad, and I think we should talk about yeah. it. And, oh boy, We're you know good. the Chris Simon suicide is uh, yeah. a little bit disturbing. And the article that I have here is just, you know, uh, obviously I think it's called CTE. Uh, is you know just a concussion trauma type of, um, um, you know. Uh, real bad depression and, and, and that kind of thing. And it doesn't say, the article doesn't say how uh, Chris committed suicide. I don't know, you know, obviously. But, uh, wow, what a, you know, what, a, uh, what a feared man in the NHL for a period of time. Um, you know, I think he had over 1,800 uh, penalty minutes. Um, he was a real tough guy in the NHL. And, uh, you know, just uh, – he was, listen, he, he was really one tough dude. He started out with Quebec, the Nordiques, yeah. and he made his way around, you know, to a couple teams. I know he played for the Rangers. I know he played for the Islanders. I know he played for Colorado. Uh, I can't – I think he might have played in Calgary a little bit. I'm not positive on all of them, but uh, yeah. he was really one tough dude. And that was uh, – as good as good of battles as Proby and, and Ty Domi had, go look at the Chris Simon Ty Domi fights, and you tell me. Yeah. Chris Simon was one tough dude. He really I, was. You know, when it comes to the CTE, I'm pretty sure that I probably have it right now. You know what I mean? Like, because you play a game where you get your head smacked around a little bit since the age of three, we all probably have a little bit of it. But when you're a, a bona fide tough guy like him, you know, where that's basically what he was there for was to be a tough guy and, and fight. Uh, I'm sure he's probably got multiple had multiple spots on his brain. That's what that is, Paul. You got all these little spots on your brain that aren't really living. You know what I mean? And yeah. I mean, you go back to the, to all the guys that have dropped dropped dead in the past, you know, ten years. Like uh, all of them, all of them had one thing in common: they were they were feared fighters in the National Hockey League. And I think the league's got to. Uh, I think the league should pay the expense to have some of the retired players uh, examine and, and give them all the help they, they can because it's just happening too often now with guys that are out of the game. I mean, Todd Ewan's another one. I mean, uh, I can go, uh, yeah, Bogard, uh I can go through Wade Belock. Belock, yeah. You know, wasn't there a Montador? Uh, not pos positive on him, Steve Montador. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of guys. These guys were all playing. Within the last 15, 20 years in the National Hockey League, Paulie. Yeah. What happened to Pavlich? Uh, didn't Pavlich have that too? Mark Pavlich? Yeah, I, I, I'm not positive about that. I, it, it, I'm not sure what happened. I know, I know he had, a, he had troubles. He had troubles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's probably all associated with one thing. I mean, I think there's not a human being that really is not walking around with a little spot on their, on their brain right now because. When you're a kid, you bang your head somewhere, you know, on a monkey bar, under a table, crawling around, you know, playing in trees and stuff. So, but for the NHL players, there, there should be a, a program set up for the retired guys, and even the guys that are uh, still still battling. Yeah. Every yeah. year they should get checked. Yeah. It's just a shitty way. It's just a. Sh I got no notified. I was at the Ranger game. And I know they lost against Winnipeg. I was there, and I got notified about it uh, through one of my former teammates, like in the middle of the afternoon. I was in the city, and you know, I was like, what? You know, I, I, Chris Simon, of all people? Yeah. You know, it sucks. It does. It's, just, it's sad. It's very sad. And, 
like you said, I think the NHL needs to do something. Um, they, they, they really should. They should step up and take some of the millions you've made that we didn't make and start pouring it into like some kind of funding to help out to help out the guys that need it. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> just, you know Chris Simon's probably a little too proud, Paulie, to, to mention it to anybody. You know, but his family did say a little bit about him. He was depressed. Yeah. You know, he was uh, you know, not feeling good about his afterlife of hockey and He's, he probably ran out of money too, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's tough, man. It's it's tough and it's very sad, but it is the darker side of it's the darker side of things, man. And you know, obviously, you and I've you and I have done we this about it over and over and over again about you know how how obviously they take care of the the, the present day players pretty good. Yeah, it's the guys that have retired. That are not getting their, their just rewards. Yeah. That's all. You and know, I don't care who's listening. It's the facts. Yeah. Well, the NHLPA really uh, should really push, uh, and you know they should not split the cost, but you know be involved on both sides. Uh, Players should. Association and obviously the NHL, and and uh, you know, um, and even if it was, you know. Uh, playing charity games or the benefits uh, and proceeds from maybe the All Star break, uh, things like that. You can go into a fund. Paulie, Paulie, they they could they could afford it. The NHL sure. Can afford it. Sure. They don't, need, they don't need some special event to make the money. They can afford it. Yeah. The way they throw the way they throw uh, money around to these players today, they can afford it. Yeah. But. That's another story. We'll have to we'll have to keep an eye on that. Yeah, it's sad. So uh, be interesting to find out uh, the rest of the information there. But I, it's definitely worth mentioning. And our, obviously, our our thoughts and prayers are with the Simon family at this time. Um, I mean, now that I went from being sad, I mean, I can get fired up pretty quick. Yeah, let's get fired up. Come on, let's get fired up. What do you think of Tom Wilson suspension there, big boy? I'm, I let you right into it. You're gonna fucking fire me up, man. Into it. Fire me up. So you mean to tell me? Okay, you ready? Hey, Gary, you listening? You fucking idiot. And I, I gotta tell you, I, I really wish I could sit on a panel right now with these people. The guy, Tom Wilson, is a six-time offender. Okay, this is his sixth suspect. Six. Five plus one is six. Six times suspended. Six fucking times. The, he don't even have ten years, I think. Does right there. Have, right there, people. Does he have right ten there. years? How many years has he been in the league, Beth? He's got six times he's been suspended. He gets six days for a vicious stick slash. To the head area. That was no natural reaction on that. He, he meant to clobber him in the face with that. So stick. you mean to tell me Matt Rempe throws a chicken wing inside of a hockey play? Let's talk about that. It's inside of a hockey play. Well, early body. This is my body. Okay. Tom Wilson takes two hands or two. Put one fucking batter up, and he gets six games. Six games, six times suspension. You oh, tell God. me that the NHL isn't Duze bots crazy. I don't get it. No, I don't it's a conspiracy. It. It's, yeah, I mean, I talked about it before the show. You know me. I'm going to jump on the conspiracy side of it. I don't blame it's you. The conspiracy side is it now that the Washington Capitals are now in a playoff spot. And your boy, the great ape, is starting to score again. We couldn't keep, we couldn't keep Tom Wilson out because they got a shot at making the playoffs. Which Gary Bettman and the boys are going like this: ha, TV ratings, TV ratings. Think about it. Matt oh Brady gets four games. He only gets six. Now Matt Rempe, I know why they gave him four games. Because he came into the league and he was doing something that the NHL goes poo-poo on. He was fighting people right away. Oh, we don't like that. So we're going to make him a scapegoat. 
but Tom Wilson, if Tom Wilson was playing for the Anaheim Ducks or San Jose Sarts right now, he'd have got 12 games or more. Oh, but we got the Washington Capitals. They're in business again. And now, oh, Alex Ovechkin. Blah, 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 blah. You know the bullshit that's going on there. You couldn't suspend them for the rest of the season because it'll hurt their chances of getting into the playoffs. Ten years an NHL player, he's got six suspensions. Well, that's, six. Why. that's Ten my concern. Years in the game, six suspensions. And he gets six games. Six, it's only two more games than Matt Rempe. He's got 10 minutes in the game. Are you fucking kidding me or what? What do you want me you, to tell you? I, I think it's a conspiracy. I really do. I mean, and I can't argue the fact that it's not because there has to be some type of answer. Or else it just shows you how bad the NHL is fucking managed. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. I still can't believe it. You mean to tell me... That a two-handed stick swing gets you six games after ten years in the leagues, and this is six times suspended. Oh, I'll give him the benefit of that. It wasn't a two-handed stick swing, but it was a vicious, right across the chop swing. No question about it. it was not a reaction to a hit or anything. And, and yeah. again, so now now what happened? Now what happens, Polly? What happens the next time Rempy gets into a situation? Are they going to double his and make his eight? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's going to go backwards, I hope. Now, George, that would be hey, George, George Peros, if you're listening or if you hear about this, if you got a degree from Princeton, give it back. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I can't argue the fact. Give it back. I can't argue the fact. It's really very, very sad, man. It's a sad day in the okay. game. The part because they the part, can't get it right. You know, Paul, the part that bothers him both, all kidding aside, is is how many times have we heard that since you and I started doing the show? Well, this is he's only a first timer. Yeah. Oh, it's only his second offense. I know this stuff was never brought up when I played. When a guy's got suspended, they never brought up, well, you know, he's a that's his fifth fifth attempt at murdering somebody. You know what I mean? Like, the way they make it sound now, it's so offensive now. Well, he's a that's a third timer, you know, third offense. Bottom line is it was a vicious chop across the jaw. Okay. Aimed towards the head. Yeah. Is yeah. that what we're trying to avoid here? Guy, and it's coming from a guy who is notorious for playing on the edge. Let's I'll give him the benefit of the doubt again. Right. By today's standards, he should have got 10 games. Absolutely. In my opinion, he should have got 10. That's what he should have got. I, I don't disagree. In other words, if, what about the regular season that you got left, basically? Especially no, no. If, he'll yeah. be back. He'll be back just in time to keep Washington in the playoff run hunt. And uh all that's gonna be doing drinking a couple of schmear enough vodkas and being happy about it. <laughs> Oh, Comedy Central down the line. Oh, yeah, I, I'm going tonight. I got my JB going. See? Oh, I got a great JB, huh? JB going. That's that's a pretty full glass of it right there. Yeah. No, I just I'm tired of the bullshit. I'm tired of of, of how it's it's wishy washy this way, but it's not wishy washy that way. It reminds me of the officiating all year long. It's been very suspect. Hey, Beth, he's gonna get. He's gonna lose what? One point four million in fines. 1.4 and fives. Is that total? That's total over the six years. Oh, over over his all his stuff. You know what? I doubt if he pays it. 1.4 million. In other words, I think the owner will give him a little check to cover that cost. That's the way it works. Yeah, I I I, I don't doubt it. <clears throat> oh, wait, okay. Speaking of that, did anybody see Anders Lee hit Heisher last night? I think it was Heisher. I didn't see it. I Stuck didn't see it. Stuck his knee out blatantly a la Alex Ovechkin in the playoffs against Pittsburgh about mm -hmm. 10 years ago. I wonder what's going to happen to Anders Lee. Did uh, <clears throat> did he did he get uh, – was there a fraction? Did he get well, – uh, The usual what happens. They, they collided. He stuck his knee out, took him out pretty good, and then some guy from Jersey jumped in, and Anders Lee beat the shit out of him. Did, did Was there any penalties for Anders oh, Lee? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
He got a name well, call. Was it five? was a blatant knee. So was it five I, minutes or two? I don't remember what they gave him. He got five minutes for fighting, that's for sure. Uh, but I, I, I'm sure they threw him out of the game. I mean, it's just – I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that one works. Yeah. Just all we're all. I think all the fans are asking for, regardless of who you cheer for, or who you don't cheer for, is is an honest assessment and honest judgment on what what the penalty is. Yeah. If 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 it's equal to a guy that did this on another team, then the penalty should be the same. Yeah. Not oh, because this guy, you know. It's his sixth offense. It's his first offense. It's his third offense. I never understood that shit. I never understood that at all. Yeah. Me but neither. You know, but... Your boy, you know, your boy Ovechkin, he's back in business again. You know, playoffs. He's in the playoffs right now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, you mentioned him, but, you know, he's one of the three stars this week with uh, McDavid and Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. What the fuck does that mean? I love it. I love it. All I know is Torch is first star. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say something. I knew you were gonna say something about Torch as soon as I said something about him. Torch Torch gives us something a topic to talk about every <laughs> week. If you if everyone, if anybody understands the comedy of this show. It is so much fun. We both have our hot buttons. Mine's is Tortorella and Crosby, and his is fucking Alex Ovechkin. I never knew any. He fucking hates Ovechkin so much. And I can't stand Crosby. And I think fucking, I think Tortorella is just a motherfucking idiot. <laughs> but it's you know, hilarious. Well, oh my God, I tell the truth. Oh, I just know it. If I say anything Ovechkin, because he comes back with either with either Sidney Crosby or John Tortorella. You can't you can't <laughs> you can't compare Ovechkin to Crosby. One's a winner, one's, one's a winner, one's just a small winner. Beth is just loading me up. I'm overloaded on content, Beth. I'm good. We're good. Oh my god, I'm dying. I'm even having my tooth, one tooth in today. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, never mind. I'll bring that. I'll bring it up later. All right. Well, what do you got other than Ranger stuff? What else you got? I, Austin Matthews is going to hit over sixty goals this year, or what? I think it'll probably get close to sixty-five. That's my wow. guess. Got, he's got the last, that's, who's the last 65 goal scorer? Brett Hall? Oh, I don't know. Probably your boy. No, I don't, I don't know if your boy ever got that. Did he Brett? ever get that right? Old Bitchkin, whatever. I mean, the great ape or whatever his name is. The great ape. Did he ever score 65 in a year? I, don't I, think, think, he, I think he did get into the 60s once. I don't know. I can't remember. All right, Beth, we're going to hit you with that. Um, well, no, he's, he's, he, yeah, he, I think I think if he – I read a little bit about matches that if he does get into the sixties, it, it'll be uh, it'll be the first time in a long time for anybody. Yeah, that's what I heard. Oh, Listen, the guy, the guy, crazy. he's improved as a hockey player. Okay, overall, I thought at one time he was just a one-way player, soft and everything else. You know, not not really fighting for the puck and all that. But he's he's a, he's, he's he's improved. I've watched enough Leaf games this year to know that, that he's improved his game. Yeah, he, he's still not a two-way caliber of a, a Nathan McKinnon. No, but he's starting to play a little more two-way. You know, both ends of the ice, going in the corners, stuff like that. I mean, he's not a small guy, Paul. He's like six foot three, two hundred eight pounds, two ten. Yeah. Austin Matthews. He's not yeah, a small, yeah. small man at all. <clears throat> it's funny because I was uh, I was at work today talking to a customer who actually is from Canada. He's a big Flames fan. And uh, I, I was talking to a buddy of mine, and he overheard me. And I said, oh, it looks like the Rangers took the Boston Bruins this year. And, uh, and, 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 the, and, and the customer asked me, uh, you know, who my team was. We sat down for about 25 minutes. We talked hockey. Very knowledgeable. Um, and I asked him, I said, you know, I, you know, I asked, I, I threw some questions at him. I said, who do you think is the best overall uh, NHL player right now? And if, Without a second, 
Nathan McKinnon. I was like, all right, so I guess you do know your hockey. Um, so, yeah, like everyone else says, you know, the guy's a bull. Um, you know, he's just – he's not, he's got beautiful natural abilities, and he's just, you know, committed. Yeah, and we, just, uh, you know. we, we've gone over that so many times. Yeah. Again, I mean, it's – you know, if, you, if, you, if your ping pong ball came up third and you end up with Connor McDavid or Austin Matthews, are you going to cry? No. You know what I mean? Like, no. Uh, I, one question for you, though. Does BMW pay for that time talking with the uh... – <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> Were you off the clock? I was talking to a customer. <laughs> Fucker. Ovi, 20 – 2007, 2008. Well, how many goals did he have, uh, Beth? Um, and I guess uh, the other thing he said, I did like. He said, hey, why don't you put this on your podcast? He said, I got a question because we were talking about different things. And I said, you know, I'm not a big fan of the big uh, of the uh, of the playoff format now. I think they should go back to, you know, what the top 16. He said, I got one better for you. He said, because there's no rivalries anymore in the NHL, really, like there was. He said, why doesn't the NHL really mix it up? And um, uh, I think he said, you know, go east to west and, you know, go points. So let's say the Rangers, let's say Rangers have 100 points and Vancouver has 102 points. So that should be, you know, one two that way and do it that way and then well, like it. it should be the one to sixteen like like it was when I played or right. now that now that they got thirty how many teams we got now thirty thirty let's make it one to twenty top twenty teams get in the in one place twenty and you know what it don't matter if number one and number twenty twenty's got to come across country yeah so yeah yeah these guys cry about how they're tired about. They fly on private planes now that got, like, like the hotel rooms on them. Yeah. Okay? Like, yeah. don't hand me the shit that you're going to be tired flying overnight and having to play a day later. Okay? <laughs> go back to that. I, I believe that. I, I don't think it's right that, that, you know, top team in the league has to, has to sit there and play, you know, their own division and then not be able to face an East team or a West team. Until the Stanley Cup. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. It would be, be great for the Rangers to finish first overall and have to play right now. Who's, who's in the, the last spot? And, and uh, They have to play Vegas right off the bat. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Oh, I, just, I just don't like that. that the, the, the matchups would be better if it was a, you went 1-16, to 2-15, blah, 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 blah. Right. I like it. I like it. So, you know, having some fun here. Looks like Beth came through. 2007-2008, he had uh, – Ovechkin was the last one to do it with 65. And Lemieux had 65 goals four times. Yeah, he was he was pretty good. Yeah, he was all right, huh? All right. Yeah, he probably did that uh, – I don't know if he did that against me in my years. He might have. Yeah. He came in in 85, so he had at least four years to do that with me. I know he scored a lot of goals when I was on the ice, though. When I <laughs> when I was in Toronto, that's yeah, for sure. Right. What year did you retire? Ninety one. Who me or him? You. I'm not retired. I'm still I'm still playing. No. <laughs> uh, I retired after 1990. 89, 90 was my last year. Ah, uh, there you go. You were just a little gaffer then. <clears throat> yeah. All right. yeah, Mario was a pretty good player. And eventually, what, he scored 65 goals in 2007, 2008? Yep. And didn't win a damn thing then either. Okay. Next. Yeah, but he was the last player to do it. It's all right. <laughs> He's got one Stanley Cup in his old career. <laughs> It's a one more than a lot of other people, though. Well, he should have. He's, isn't he the superstar? Isn't he the great one? Yeah. I don't know what I mean. Come on. So, do you think he's going to break the record, cut? He's got what, 26 now. He still needs, like, close to 40-something goals or something. Yeah, he needs about 48. <laughs> yeah, well, he, I don't think he'll do it next year. He's going to have to play till he's 400. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think he'll do it because as, as a wise 
friend of mine once said, you don't get better as you get older. Yeah, proof's in the pudding this year because if it's if not for his late surge, the guy had eight goals after after what forty games this year. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Like so, yeah. what, what makes you think he's going to light it up at the beginning of the year next year? Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. He was hurt for a while this year too, wasn't he? Anyway, all right. Well, I don't know what Beth is saying no to, but. Uh, um, what what else? He's saying exactly what most people feel. No on Alex Ovechkin. Oh, she's saying no. I think he's going to break it. I think he's going to play until he breaks it. I think, and I think the Capitals are going to let him do it. Yeah, and then he's going to go home back to Russia with all and turn all his hard-earned money that he that the American public gave him and turn it all into rubles. <laughs> That's what he's going to do. He ain't living here full time. None of them do. They get the hell out of here. Yeah. Well, that American dollar over in Russia is a real big thing, isn't it, though? Well, of course it is. As much as they hate the Americans, of course. I've been there. I've been to Russia. Remember that? I was there for a week. Yeah, I remember that. I'm surprised that country's not all Alcohols Anonymous. <laughs> they, got a, they got a booze kiosk every block. Yeah. You know what that means? You can drink on the street. Of course. Open. Everyone's drunk over there, eh? <laughs> All I know is I drank for seven days there. <laughs> I'm sure you did. I didn't go. Uh, <clears throat> what's the goaltender's name again? You went in the summertime. Did you go in the summertime? That's who's the goalie that uh, had a good. Good future with the Rangers, but he, he wrecked his shoulder and couldn't play. Oh God! Him and I were on the flight on the flight to Russia. It was nine and a half hours. What year? That's a long time ago, or ten years ago, twelve years ago. A night. I know who you're talking he about. When he played, yeah. Geez, the name's right there, but yeah, I know who you're talking him, about. Him and I, we drank on Luchier, the plane. Dan Gluchier. No, no, no. No? No. We drank on the plane for nine and a half hours. We threw our stuff into the hotel room, went across the street to a kiosk, bought a whole bunch of booze, sat in the lobby. They let you drink in the lobby of a Holiday Inn, right in the lobby, right in the, the chairs. <laughs> and him and I stayed up for 54 hours straight drinking. Oh, my God. It wasn't Dan Clucci? No. God, his oh. name's right there. I'll get it for next week. I know I'll I'll get it. His career got ended because he ruptured a nerve in his shoulder and he couldn't raise his arm. Anymore. Blackburn. That's a Dan Blackburn. Blackie and I we we had a good time there. That's good stuff. We had a good time there. That's good stuff. <laughs> but do I want to live there? No. Did you guys tear up the hotel too? Tell you what, it was it was they were good to us there. I mean. Uh, I, we were with the New York Fire Department. We were playing their fire department hockey teams. So we played like two games, and then there was a third game when it was just the fire department against the fire department. I was glad That's, I didn't have to play three what did, games. What do they say in Russian? The Strovia, right? Oh, was it? The we, we had, we had, listen, we had so many like get so many get togethers at these high end uh, restaurants there where. Every two seconds, somebody's toasting you. The vodka is just like, and that's what you're drinking. You're drinking vodka straight out of the glass. By the time you've had an appetizer, you've had seven shots already. <laughs> that's how they are. Yeah. One guy toast, the next guy gets up, next guy gets up. That was crazy. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm, yes. I'm happy for the experience of being there. Sure. To, to, to really see what Moscow is like. It's not what everybody thinks it is dark, dreary, old school, old buildings. It's very modernized. Yeah. In fact, more modernized than most American cities. You know what I'm going to bring up? I knew it. I knew I had something I wanted to bring up. And then we're going to go with the Rangers. Yes. You know who You know who threw a shot at your boy Tortorella? Who's that? You're going to be very surprised. Former Ranger. What, Sean Avery? No, and you went to Alaska with him. On Eddie Hospitar? Uh, uh, Dubinsky. 
Oh, Brandon Dubinsky took a shot at Torts. Oh, can I get the Kleenex out again for these fucking guys? <laughs> Seriously. Come on. I like Brandon Dubinsky. He was pretty tough. <laughs> he took a shot at Torts. Told, told him he's Listen, an asshole. <laughs> I like Doobie, too. I got to know him pretty good and on another trip up in Alaska. when. Yeah, you went with him. I was, up, I was up there for uh, Scott Gomez golf. Scott Gomez, right? Yeah, Doobie's, Dubinsky's from Alaska, too. He's a good guy. Hey, listen. I'm just telling it's, you to be it's shattered. All, it's, it's the, the thing. It, what's changed, Paulie, is the amount of money these guys made and that they could get away saying shit now. You can, if, if, if Dubinsky is retired now, obviously, he's probably, he's probably made about $30 million or more. You know what I mean? In his career. You know what I mean? I, I get it. I get it. A guy like like I'd probably go nuts too if I had fifty million in the bank and you and you scratched me. You know what I mean? But yeah. unfortunately, if you scratched me back in the day, I might have had twelve cents in the bank. You know what I mean? So you're not going to say shit. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. And and Torts is right. You see, here's the part that you forgot. Go look at Couturier's numbers since he came off the injured list. As, they, as they say in westerns, hot shit. You know, hot <laughs> shit. That's he hasn't done nothing for them offensively. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't, I don't doubt it. I think the bench could probably had a few run-ins with parts in when he's in New York. How about, how about? I was just talking with somebody the other day about this. How about the Kachuk Hubido fucking trade? How'd that work out for him? Didn't work out at all. There's a guy, mm. Jonathan Huberdo had a fan. He had a hundred points, almost a hundred point season there. And he just, what's your favorite line? He shit the bed since then. <laughs> yeah. That's your line, the shit the bed part. Yeah. I, I don't know. know what happened to him. Yeah, I had that. You must not like the Canadian dollars or the Canadian loonies or the Canadian weather. I I have no clue how his game went from here, not to the middle, right to the bottom. Right to the bottom. How many goals did Jonathan Hooverdale have this year, Beth? Oh, he's not doing very good at all. Yeah. All right, let's get into New York Ranger hockey. Yes. You want to start with the good? Let's give them a lot, a lot of credit to start with. Uh, if I'm correct, they played nine games in, what, 14 or 15 nights? And, yeah. and when they leaked a little bit of oil, they came right back with a win, Polly. You know, without Truba, without Lindgren. You know, a little shuffling here and in and out with the defensemen. A couple of shuffles back and forth with the forward lines. I, I, it's a pretty impressive streak that they went on. And, you know, I, think about it. Like You and I have been back and forth a few times this year. You more than me. you got to admit that about, eh, you know, about the Rangers. They got 98 points. They got the most – they tied for the most points in the league. Yeah. With 11 games to go, 12 games to go, something like that. Well, yeah. So, I don't – and the only problem is, is Carolina is still breathing down their neck. Yeah. Well. Uh. I guess I'll start here. Um, I'm not going to start with Matt Rempe, even though I want to. No, we'll, we'll, let's start. Like we'll start with the defense rate right first, okay? Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm impressed with Zach Jones. I'm impressed with. Finally, I I, I, I think Keandre Miller's been playing the best hockey he's played all year long. I would agree. In this stretch where he's playing. Well, with Schneider. Schneider's actually playing well. like he did. Schneider's playing almost like he did his rookie year. He's, he's, yeah. he's up to that level again. Yep. So they those two guys have really stepped up. Uh, okay. I think Gustafson got hurt the other night. I heard he didn't practice today. That was an no. He got elbowed in the head by Oposo. Yeah. Um, Whether so, it was intentional or not, it doesn't matter. It should have been a penalty. That was an overtime, too. It almost cost the Rangers. But yeah. Uh, you gotta you you gotta love the way the defense is held together without Lindgren and, and Truba in the lineup. Yeah. You know, I mean Rubino came in and he, I'll tell you what, he had he led the team in hits against Florida. He had eight hits that night. 
I mean, he's played very well. They've all gelled together at, 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 at an important time. I mean, they could have, like, folded a little bit, but they didn't. Yeah. You know, they got good goaltending from Shesterkin, which they're going to need. You know that. It's got to be oh, there. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes off the record, you know I'm a little hard on Adam Fox, but he's he's turned into that Norris Trophy winner that he was a couple years ago. The last probably four or five games. Yeah, some very games. important to have him playing well at the same yeah. time. Look at Beth, you're so spot on, man. I love it. Ten goals, thirty-four assists in sixty-nine games. Can you imagine? Wow! And he signed a big contract over there, didn't he? Yeah, and, and I like how she got. Scanlon's been up for about a week now. Apparently, he's been up for a couple, for a couple, at least a few days or more. What? But he, he might have to play tomorrow. Because Gus is good. May so what happened out. to Mackey and what happened to um, – He got hurt. He got hurt. Okay. And I guess Ben Harper's still hurt. Well, he's, still, he's been skating, but they haven't said anything about it. Yeah, okay. I, I don't – listen, when, when, when it all comes back to to, to a healthy roster with Trouba and Lindgren are back, I'm not so sure they're going to call anybody up. No, I, I, you're already going to have an extra defenseman or two to start with. With Rue Riedel and uh, and Zach Jones, yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, I don't know, and I don't. I'm I'm sorry to tell everyone, and I know Bet's going to be mad, but oh, don't don't go there. <laughs> don't, I don't think don't they... go there because I, I did spot a a Lindgren jersey that was in Beth's possession. Yeah, she loves it. Don't Lindgren. go there. She loves him. Don't go I don't there. think he's going to be a Ranger next year. I got news for you. He's a restricted free agent. And with, with what they have right now, I, I don't know, man. I think he's injury prone. I'm sorry. I know everybody loves the guy, and he's got the heart of a lion, man. But I think the way he plays the game is starting to really going to is really going to start wearing on him heavily. I I really do. So. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting in the offseason. Uh, he is a restricted free agent. Um, so defensively, I gotta tell you, um, yeah, I think the Rangers played well, played really really well. I mean, uh, you know, um, over the stretch of games they've played well, like you said, without the captain and you know with uh, with Lingren being hurt, I think the defense has played really really well. Um, and, uh, you know, leading that charge, like you said, aside from Fox, um, I'm really impressed with Snyder. Zach Jones has been real good, man. Oh, yeah. Real good. He can play. Yeah. He can play. Oh. No question about it. He's got good good skating ability, good awareness, good puck handling ability. You know, he, he can create offense. Yeah. You know, and he does try. he does try to play physical, but that's probably his weak point. Yeah, sure. Sure, because he's, he's, he's not uh, a big guy. You're not a big guy at all. At yeah. All. So, um, but very good. There. Absolutely no complaints of the way he's played since he's been inserted in the lineup. No, not at all. So I got a confession to make, and I, I agree, Beth. They're gonna. Paulie's wrong. They're gonna sign him anyways. Um, I think that's a mistake. But okay. Um, I'll tell you what, if they don't sign him, I'll give you an Alex Ovechkin jersey. <laughs> if they sign him, you got to give me a Crosby jersey. How's that? How's that for a bet? Eight years, $84 million? Are you insane? For Is what? that what that says? For who? They'll sign him. She says eight years, $84 oh, million. That's got to be Huberdose. Is that Huberdose? Yeah, it might be his. That's yeah, tough. we're having two different conversations. Um, uh, I gotta, I, I'm gonna make a confession here, um, and I think everyone knows. Um, earlier on in the year, I think my my, I had two two guys that I was really going after. It was, uh, it was uh, Alexei Lavernier and uh, Lafreniere, and uh, you know Chris Kreider. And um, I got to tell you, even though he's been, you know, he hasn't been crazy lately, but I, I've really, I've really, I really got to eat my words on Alexei Lafreniere, man. I think this kid is a fucking stud. And uh, 
I, I think I said it last week, and he's just going. He's just growing into his own. I think every game he plays better. He plays smarter. He, you know, what I love about and I, I said this years ago. The thing that I did love about his game was when he wasn't scoring and he wasn't impressing anybody. He he was still playing the right right brand of hockey. He's very intelligent. You know, he back checks well, he takes the body, he's not afraid to, you know, scrum it up in the corners and stuff like that. So, but I tell you, I've really been impressed watching him play lately, uh, his stick handling, his vision, just the things that he's been doing has really blossomed. And I think the kid's going to be a stud. Um, so I'm glad that I was wrong because there was a time there where I was like, wow, I, I just don't see it. Um, but uh, on the flip side of that, you know, uh, I, I know that Chris Kreider means a lot to the New York Ranger franchise and games played. He's got ten years in his ten years now as a New York Ranger, I believe. I think he started in 2012, so uh, 2012-13, right? Um, I, I just, I'm sorry, guys, but the New York Rangers need more from him. Uh, on a daily basis. And if he thinks he's going to be able to play the way he plays now in the playoffs, he's going to be one of the biggest letdowns of all time. Um, the guy just skates by. He doesn't look like he wants to be involved uh, in, in dirty areas in the ice. And unfortunately, you're a power forward. And that's what the New York Rangers need from him. And that line, even with Roslovic, who does add speed, um, they got to get it together. That line has to get it together. Like, uh, I got to see some improvement. That whole line within the next three to five games heading towards the playoffs. I just yeah. have to see it. I have to see it. It's one of those ones. Show me. Don't talk about it. Show me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I'm still waiting for Roslovich to do something, you know, a little bit more. Uh, they have to have that line going, Paul, because you can't just go with one line, period. No, That's, I don't disagree. You can't, you can't go with that. Uh, Kreider, like I said, when you look at his numbers, I know I'm, I'm beating a dead horse again. And I said it last week. I said it the week before. The numbers are good. Yeah. He's got a high plus minus. He's got 30 plus goals again. He's got 50 or more points again. In fact, I think he's got more than that because – I think it's for the first time he's, he's almost got the same amount of assists and points and goals, I should say. Uh, there's times when I watch the game, and I'm sure people notice it, It's he doesn't even look like he cares. Mm. Like, like you skate and you don't even bump the guy. You know, stuff like that. That's the thing I see sometimes with him now. Like he'll, he'll, go, he'll, engage. Go, he'll forecheck or he'll work the corners or work the side, but not really hard. That's, you know, that's what I see. So Yeah, he doesn't seem like he's engaged. I don't yeah. disagree. I don't know, man. That line, like you said, there's no way you can ride it to the playoffs, man. And, and you know, you can't put everything on that on that oh. line. No. You know? Uh, Zavanajad really has to find the back of the net. Well, he, he, started to, he, started, he had three goals in his last four games or something like yeah. that. So he's starting to show a little bit. But yeah. I'm looking at that line as a whole. Yeah. I want to see them. If they're Let's put it this way. If they're playing at a B- minus right now, I want to see them playing A hockey going into the playoffs where they're really in tune with each other and they're really creating, really you know, getting a lot of chances. You know? And actually – Putting the puck on the back, you know. Yeah. Right back. Right calling me out, bro. Oh, he always does. He, it's a Montreal Canadian fan. What do you expect? He, he's calling me out, Mike. You're right, though, man. I get you. The playoff starts and these motherfuckers don't show up, boy. I'm gonna be the first but guy ringing the bell. Boy, and it's that line right now that we're talking about that that concerns me, man. It really does. Um, so. Yeah, you're right, and I'll put it up there. You, you're right. But uh, he has, what, 65 points? Plus 21. Plus 21. 
I, I, mean, I don't have to get the last word in, but eight I, years, eighty-four million for fucking Lindgren. Wow. No, I don't think she was talking about. Were you, Beth? You weren't talking about Lindgren. She there, says right? yes. She said oh, yes. That's 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 too much. Yes. I would pay him more than five mil a year. <laughs> I guess the cap. Um, but uh, yeah, I tell you what. It's that line we're talking about right now. I mean, and this was the reason why I was concerned at the trade deadline that they didn't put a little more mustard up there. I like Roslevic. He does add some speed. But boy, oh, boy, the other night, man, he was a turnover king. He was not conscientious of where he was putting the puck. So I was a little concerned with that. Um, you know, Paco, I think it's the bottom six that are really um, – I think it's the bottom six that really is going to help the New York Rangers in the playoffs. It's the Beasties and the Cacos and the White and the and the Winbergs and 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 those play and the Matt. I tell you what, Matt Rempe, um he better play in the playoffs. I think I think I think he, you're going to need him to stand in front of the net because nobody's going to move him out of there. I told you what I what I said weeks ago about him. I watched Florida the other night, Steve. When he was on the ice, they weren't looking to see who opened to pass the puck to. They were looking to see where the big giant was. And that's a really important thing when you get into the playoffs. When defensemen start looking over their shoulder at the opposition when they go back to get the puck instead of looking to make the play. And that's what Rempe brings. And again, a couple of hits he had the other night, Paulie. They sounded loud on my TV. Yeah. They Rattle the cage. Loud. You know what I mean? Rattle the what's cage. The, what's the line there? Rempire State? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's you know, you got to let him play. You got to give him his minutes. You know, let's not get crazy and think he's going to play like 13, 15 minutes a night. But give him his five to eight minutes a night and let him, you know, spin him up and let him go. Yeah, I don't disagree. I do want to make a quick mention, and I do apologize, but see, it was Uber though. Yeah, um, I, we're all wishing Mike, uh, Mikey Mason, well, man. Yes, um, you know Mike Mason's a big, a big uh, listener to the program. He's he's such a gentleman, such a really good man, and uh, we're uh, we're praying for you, Mikey, and. We're hoping that you're doing well, and hopefully you listen to the podcast when you get a chance. But uh, we're wishing you well, Mike, and I wanted to mention that. Uh, I wanted to do it earlier, and then uh, I got off track because Katsi got me going with uh, Tortorella. So, anyway, Mike, we wish you well, man. We miss you, buddy. there, big boy. Paulie's coming up this summer. We'll go for another meal. Yeah, we're going to Vincent's. Linguini and clam sauce. Um. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, she was talking about Huberdo. I thought yeah, so. That's what I thought. I mean, I, 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 listen, I, I love Lindgren more than you do, obviously, but 10.1 million a year for him? No. Yeah. No. Sorry. Um, so let's finish but up. But they are going to sign up. Words my words. The Rangers will re sign Lindgren. You watch. So. They will. I don't know. I mean, what are you going to do with Zach Jones and everyone else that's down there waiting to make their splash? As long as they can tape Lindgren up, stitch him together, and he puts the skates on, they're going to sign him. All right. Anyway. It's just the way it is. Um, but like I said, bottom six guys. Yeah. And then we got to talk about how Cooley didn't play the other night. Yes. I don't know what – here, listen, I like Laviolette. Uh, I think – I think uh, <laughs> I love when Katsi, like, feeds me a fish and says, all right, go get this one. But um, the other night uh, against the Panthers, I wasn't – What are you, you seal? I'm feed, feeding you a fish. I mean, I'm hooking you. That's what I'm doing. I uh, I don't – I – there's sometimes – I, I was shocked just like you this. I was I shocked to learn that. I, I'm still shocked. Here it is. Uh, it's the number one defense. You get the most hits for uh, for a rookie. Yeah. And you're and playing a team that actually, likes to play the body. He's actually up there. Like, I think the top rookie in the league only has 18 goals this year or something like that. He's got 12. 
Yeah, I mean, and he's physical, and he takes the body every chance he can. So why wouldn't you play him against a team that's physical like like Florida? Um, I agree. And so I was really surprised with that. But you know what? This well, you heard you heard you remember what I talked about before the show with him. I watched the cut the last the two games previous to the Florida game. He he had a couple of plays in each game where the basic hockey that he'd been playing all year and doing the right yeah, thing, he I did agree. not do. He did not yeah, do. He tried to he tried to be Panarin and make a fancy play. Yeah. And it didn't work. Well, first of all, you're not Panarin. Only Panarin can get away with making mistakes like that. Right. You're a rookie. So I, I think if you read Lavalette and uh, his reasoning behind it, he really didn't say anything about how he played. He just thought that he's a rookie and there's going to be, you know, some shuffling going on between the bottom three, four or five players. Between him, Brzezinski, and whoever. Rugby. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think if you read between the lines, it was about his not doing what he was supposed to do the last couple of games when he had the puck in a clear situation where he, he pressed B instead of A, which was the right move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I did notice that he was making a little more mistakes than usual because you know me. I rant and raved all year long how I thought. He played a really. He plays a very sound, very uh, mature hockey game. Absolutely. You know, he's very mature for being a rookie in the way he plays the game. So, and I did notice that. And I think I don't know if it was in the Boston game or if it was in the Jet game. There was a couple games in a row that he did that, and it was actually. Yeah. I don't think it was so much yeah. the Jets game. I think it was the two games previous. It was yeah. It was some sloppy play, and I, I noticed it, and I was surprised because it was very noticeable. Because we talked about how mature he plays the game, but uh, against Florida, you know, a team that hits, you think you'd want your hitters in there. I thought Rempe had a good game that night. He absolutely did. Um, I think Rempe is, uh, you know, I heard uh, I heard the re- the in game report about how he was told, you know, enough with the stage fighting, which is fine. I'm not a big stage fighter guy either. But if the you know opportunity arises, you got to set somebody straight. He's he's a great guy for it. And then, obviously, like you said, man, he rattles the fucking boards, man. He makes people know, boy, am I coming in? Oh my gosh, if I connect to you, you're gonna know I hit you, man. Listen, well, a lot, of, a lot of the defensemen in this league have it easy compared to the old days. They don't get run like that. Yeah. They don't get hit like that. Yeah. Now you got this kid. He's a train. You know, he's on that track, and it's out of control sometimes, so you better get the hell out of the way. <laughs> and that's what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, so. And, uh, and again, that, that's a part of the game that a lot of people don't think is important, but it is. It's so it's important. It's so fucking important to make the other team's D worry about going back and getting the puck so they yeah. don't have the easy way out all the time. Right. And if you continue to pound these guys like he does, you know, in a big game, they might be, they might not be feeling so hundred percent by the middle of the third period in a in a playoff game that they'll cough that puck up to somebody else who's not a rampy. Yeah. Because they're just tired of going back and getting hit all the time. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, it's so important that that part of the game will never change. You have to have that. Yeah. yeah. You have to. Yeah. Too bad Chris Credit doesn't do it. He should, but he doesn't. Um, I wish he was more physical. Well, I do uh, too. I, I, I just, I just, I see. I'm not as, I'm not as critical as cry on Kreider as you are because his numbers still say okay. But he's yeah. got, he's got to bring more when he's not having that night. You know what I mean? Offensively, like, don't curl away from the guy that you can hit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that one hit adds on to another, to another. By the time the second, third period comes around, you got that's how you wear teams down with body checking. Yeah. If it's just a drive by and a curl, you're not wearing anybody down. Yeah. You know. Well, he's the king of the drive by curl. Well, right his numbers, now. Are, his numbers are still pretty good. I understand. You know. 
Uh, I agree, Brett. They're, they're sidestepping them. They're looking over their shoulders. They're, they're not just looking over their shoulders once. They're looking over their shoulders twice to see, see their radar is being picked up. <laughs> Lurch is on the move here. Rempire <laughs> State's on the move. And I love the Ranger fans, right? I'm so proud of the Ranger fans. They cheer. They chant his name. And he brings so much excitement. Exactly. It's like, you know, it, it's it's just like he's so refreshing to the Ranger fans because it's finally time they got a guy that can do this stuff. Isn't that a favorite line in New York? I got a guy. He's we got a guy. We got a guy. We got a guy. We got a guy. You know, so it's good <laughs> stuff, man. Really good me, stuff. Let me finish off on what you just said. The players who don't play that way that are on the Rangers love them. Oh my goodness, do they love them? Sure. They're not going to come out, but deep down they go, boy, am I fucking glad he's on our team. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, yeah. guarantee. Yeah. Well, again, one of the in in game stories. I forgot what her name is. Uh, Kaplan, whatever her last name. She said, she said when she interviewed uh, Capo, Capo said they missed him in the Vancouver game. Sure yeah. did. They missed his energy. They missed his crowd energy. He gets the crowd into the game. The Winnipeg he gets game. The players into it, man. You know, it was, the, it was the Winnipeg game. Yeah, is that what didn't I say? Oh, what did I said the Jets. Vancouver. Oh, did I say Vancouver? Anyway, it's might as well, might well have been. It's north of the border. Yeah, right. Canucks and Canucks, right? So, <laughs> so that's it, man. I mean, uh, you know, you got to love the kid. And, uh, you know, he, Laviolette needs to continue to play him and develop him. And, uh, you know, I, I'd like to see him. I'd like to see him get more ice time, to be honest with you. And yeah, I don't like seeing him on the power you're, play. Yeah, you're not going to see that, Paul. Especially now during the regular season. Nah, he's not he's not ready for that yet. Not ready for that. Just do what you do now. Play the play the fourth line, do what you do, bang bodies, create offense by standing in front of the net. Get your get you had an opportunity the other night, look good, look normal. Tried to go five hole. I would have tried to roof it, but that's me. Uh he's not gonna get that opportunity to, to what you're looking for. It's it's he's too young. And he's still got a lot of – there's a lot of work to do with him when it comes to his stability for a guy that tall. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, think, I, think, I think his balance is pretty good for his size, but it's going to get better. And he, he's listen, he's not even filled in yet weight-wise. Yeah. Whether people want to believe that or not. Like, yeah. If this guy lasts long enough, you're looking at a guy that's going to play it at about 250, 255. Then what are you going to do? I'm being honest with you. He's not even filled in yet. What you going to do when the Rempy train comes for you? I mean, you think about how, how, you know, Zidane Achara was a big man, you know, and he didn't play at 210 or 220 like like Rempy is right now, 220 or 230. Uh, I think they got him at 241. Yeah, he don't look that heavy yet. But, boy, when he fills in, look out. <laughs> I love it. Look out. I love it. But I Really think I think that line that he's on. I think the third and fourth lines are going to be lines that the rain for the Rangers to succeed are going to have to chip in. Jimmy VC on the fourth line with Matt Rempe standing in front of the net. I don't know if you get much better than that, man. No, you know, on for a fourth line that's going to chip in the odd goal here and there, and I think it's so important. Well, you saw what they did the other night, right? Like they Fox scored the big goal to cut it to two one, and. Right. 99, out 99 times out of 100, most coaches would put, hey, we're on a roll here. Let's get more offense out there. No, no. Lavalette slyly put out the fourth line. And guess yep. what happened? The puck was in their zone the whole time. Yep. And then they came back with with Panarin and Lafreniere and Trocek. It was a good move. It was a good move. It got them back into the game. Yeah. Yep. Lavalette's pushed a lot of right buttons. I, I agree. If, if he's hit 100 buttons this year, he might have missed maybe no more than a handful. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I'm going to have to have a talk with him when I meet him this summer. See if he remembers doing, see if he remembers doing an autograph show with me in Binghamton when he was playing for the Binghamton Rangers. 
<laughs> I got it right here. You seen it? Yeah. Pete Rose, Gail Sayers, and moi. Gail Sayers. All the, rest, all, the, all the rest of them were all in the minor leagues. And Peter Lavalette's right on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think he's been I think he's been excellent. I think he's done a hell of a job. Uh, I do question some things, but you know it's a it's a shame, and I don't I, I don't think anybody's asked, but probably should. You know, how's Blake Wheeler doing? Um, but with Blake Wheeler going down, you know we get the opportunity to see Matt Rempe. And, you know, but, you know he didn't exactly step into a bad situation, okay? Yeah, which is sometimes more 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 hard work is involved as a head coach because. The table is set already for him with with, with the roster. When you think about sure. it, so sure. he had to, he had to use whatever skill he had and experience he had, how not to go backwards with a team that's supposedly on the uprise, and he's done it. Yeah. He's done it. Yeah. Yep, he's pushed the right buttons. Got to figure out what we're gonna do with that line A or whatever you want to call it, line A one or. B one or well, I, I I just if the Rangers can get Zabinajak, Kreider, and Roslovich, if that's if that's the line, and that's the way it's got to stay, they got to get better. Agreed. Because you know if they if they become a threat like they should be, then it makes it easier for Trocheck, Panarin, and Lafreniere. Yeah. You know? Well, I will, and the other thing I'll say about Lafayette, Lafayette, I will say. He has, on a few occasions now, he's separated uh, Zibanejad and, and Oh, now that reminds me. There was a couple games ago. I think it was before the Winnipeg game. I can't remember who they played. <clears throat> Kreider, Kreider didn't play very much in one of the periods. Yeah. He sat mm -hmm. him for, for, for quite a bit in one period. So. Yeah. I expect more from him, too. So. <clears throat> And not, you know, uh, I, I think I think the biggest thing that we all feel is that, and like you said, you know, the numbers are great, but um, how many times do players get evaluated about what they do without the puck? You know, that's a big evaluation in, in, in a player. What does the player do when he doesn't have the puck, without the puck? Yeah. Where's his positioning? You know, where, what are they doing? You know, how are they forechecking? Are they taking the body? Are they winning battles? Are they going to battle? Are they in the areas that are tough to take care of? Um, and I guess those are the questions. So I I, I like I like to see what Laviolette's doing. And, uh, you know, hopefully we could get some motivation out of those guys. So we'll see what happens there. Well, next up is Torts. Yeah, the Flyers are, have been uh, real wishy-washy lately. Um, so, you know. Torch is going to stroll out out there in MSG with his little sweatsuit on. and <laughs> His track suit, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a new thing. Remember we talked about that a couple shows ago, him and the whole coaching staff wearing track suits. Yeah. They, don't wear they, think they think they're the, you know, in the Olympic Games or something like that. <laughs> they're marching with their flags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's all I got, man. I'm done, big boy. Yeah, it was a good one tonight. Uh, covered a lot of ground. And Beth, you enjoy your uh, Lindgren jersey? Yeah, yeah. She's the best. Thank you, Beth, for all your help today. You do such a great job. Um. And uh, look, she's Johnny on the spot. Every question, bang, bang, bang. There yeah. you go. Um, that's it. Now, next is it next week? Next week's going to be a tough one. I don't know what's going to happen. Katsi needs some time no, off. I'm not going to be available. I could be available any night but Tuesday. Well, and Monday and Wednesday they play. So, <laughs> well, no, Monday. I, I have a listen, I have a thing to do. It's called uh, Skate with the Greats. You know, the Rangers do it yeah. every year. Enjoy it. The Rangers yeah. do it every year. And uh, I go and we mingle with the crowd. And there's about 11 or 12 of us, including Brian Leach, uh, Adam Grace, like from the 94 team. I think, uh, you know, some older guys like Steve Vickers and Pete Stemkowski and Grash, yeah. myself. I think 
Tommy Laidlaw, I'm trying to think who else is coming. Aaron Boris will be there. Um, Aaron Boris. Listen, you got to get you got to you got to get gravy train on the show, man. Impossible. <laughs> we wouldn't come on here. <laughs> Not under these circumstances. <laughs> not, not, not with the F-bombs and all that stuff. Won't happen. Oh, man. Well, we'll keep it clean for him. Ah, ah. Won't happen. All right. Well, That's we'll bring man. it out next week. Man. We'll, we'll, we might have to take a vacation. Katsi's putting in for paid time off, Beth. So, All right, everyone. I get paid the same as you do, Beth. What? what? Paulie gets paid to talk to hockey fans from Canada and Florida. You figure it out. Okay? Oh, thank he takes time from his job to stand to the side and talk to a Canuck about <laughs> hockey. Oh, and he's oh, on, in the meantime, he's on the clock. Listen. She uh, goes next what? Thursday. What about Thursday? Can we do Thursday? We'll have to take a seat. That's probably going to be the only day. So let's. Well, then that'll. We'll lock it in now. What do you got to do on Thursday? I don't know. I got to look at my schedule too, Pop. Well, you're coming home from work. That's all. Well, I don't know. (laughs) What is Thursday? The fifth. Uh yeah. I don't know. I got to see, man. See here. Uh. Well, I'll let everyone know. I'll, I'll take a look at it. I'll let everyone know. All righty. That's the only day we have, so we'll probably have to do it then. All right. Other than that, we'll see everyone next Thursday. Be good. Peace out. Let's go Rangers and uh, uh, Rempire. What do we call them now? What, what's his name? The Rempire State. The Rempire State. Good night, everybody. See you next All week. Right.